Well, hey, Becoming Me. I am so excited to introduce you to my warrior friend, Michelle. Michelle, welcome to Becoming Me. Thank you for having me. It's so good to have you here. And y'all, I've got to share with you that Michelle and I met at a virtual Galentine's event, which was so much fun. And we both actually were playing bachelorettes on this like, <laughs> virtual dating. Thing. It was so cool. So it was fun to be able to meet that way. And now to be able to cheer each other on in our becoming journeys. And, you know, Michelle, if someone wasn't familiar with who you are, let me ask you maybe the hardest question of our time together. Who is Michelle? Who is Michelle? Well, I mean, in career wise, I am a Christian matchmaker and dating coach. I also host a podcast. Um, so do that as well. Um, yeah. And I'm just really like an encourager. I just love people. I love connecting people. I love building community. I love serving. I love Jesus. Yeah. I mean, that's the small version of who I am, but there's so many layers to me and so much depth to me. And I've been through so much in my life. And I always say I've lived about a hundred different lives in, in my 32 years on this planet. So yeah, I think, uh, you know, that's the short version of who Michelle is. I love that. That's amazing. And y'all, at the end of this, you'll have to go follow Michelle on Instagram because you always have such positivity and light. And I love your reels and like just everything you're posting is so much fun. And it's encouraging as a single person to be able to follow along with your journey and all that you're doing. Um, so, you know, you mentioned different facets of your story, and I would love for you to take some time to just unpack your journey. Like what has made you who you are today? What's your story? Yeah, I mean, I feel like there's so many stories. So I think this question is very loaded. I'm like, which story do I tell? But to be honest, if I if I am saying like from the get go, like I knew something was different about me. I knew that I had something inside of me. I didn't know what it was at the time um, to just really do something big in this life. And I, if you ask anyone, like even from a child, I was always doing all of the things and a part of everything. And, um, but it really started, um, I, I was born and raised in a very toxic family and, you know, looking at my journey and just seeing how far I've come and how much God has redeemed in my life. I think that is something to note because now I do work as a Christian matchmaker, helping create healthy relationships. So I love that like God has used my story and, and everything about me from childhood and has completely spun it a 180 to really redeem it. But I grew up in a very small town, like I said, uh, with a very toxic family life. My father was, you know, hauled off to jail when I was a really young um, child. I don't really remember it. I've never been sat down and told all the details of, of my story or what kind of everything that transpired, what that looked like. It was always kind of like hearing little bits of the story along my way and kind of filling in the blanks as I go. And through that, you know, it was really hard for my mom who obviously raised three kids on her own, me and my two sisters, and really struggled to make ends meet. And, you know, there was so many times where the church would come over and bring a baskets of, of goodies around the holidays because we couldn't really afford anything. We couldn't afford you know, the magical Christmases that you see on television or you see on movies. And so my childhood was different than most people's. You know, I had hand-me-downs from all my sisters and I was always mad that I couldn't, you know, get the new, new things or the best toys, but that was just not our reality. And yeah, I just grew up very... It was a very challenging upbringing with a lot of chaos. Um, and so I left my hometown when I was 18 and, and changed, my, changed my name, changed my identity because my identity had always been rooted in what people knew of my family or my family history. And it was never rooted into who I was as a person. And no one really got to know me because they automatically had put this label on me of, oh, you come from this family or, oh, these are your siblings or, oh, this is like your history. But no one looked at me and said, who is Michelle? And so I think my story really begins like, 
creating my own identity. And I love in the Bible that like Jesus had changed so many people's names from who they were to who they were becoming. And that was really me as I, I changed my name so that I could, um, and that's how Michelle Apples was born. So Apples is not my last name, my real last name. And it was really a way to create my own identity for people to be able to look at me and not see someone else or see a history there, but just see me with fresh eyes. And so that really started my journey of self-discovery, of creating my own identity, finding out who my identity was, and being able to build on that. So I, I really, and it was challenging because I think a lot of my story was like, I was thriving and striving for everything and anything for someone to be proud of me, for someone to tell me I was worthy, for someone to tell me that I could be be something or do something with my life because my whole childhood I was told I was nothing and I wasn't worthy and I could never do the things in life. And I was really raised in this box, in this bubble and sheltered because I grew up in a very small town. I'd never traveled before. I never really knew there was anything outside of that small town. And so, you know, as I was, I was 18 when I moved away, I, you know, left everything I ever known. And it was so scary because I was, I always tell people, I was so dumb. I was 18, but I like literally acted like a 10 year old because I'd never seen anything of the real world. Everything on TV seemed so far out of reach because it was just not in that like zone, that bubble that I was placed in. And so I really just chased after anything I could chase after. I chased after, you know, I, I did some acting and I worked on cruise ships and I started companies and I, you know, traveled around a lot and met so many great people, but there was always something in me that was this void. And, you know, when you're searching for fulfillment into voids and holes inside of you, that cannot fill those voids, you end up feeling even lonelier. And I just remember I, you know, I was doing all the things and from the outside looking in, people would be like, wow, her life is amazing. She's doing all these fabulous things. She's at parties with celebrities. She's meeting amazing people, but really inside it felt so empty. And it was really then that I had came across people that came into my life and really just invited me to church, invited me in. And I did grow up in a church, but it was a really bad experience. I had pastors say really awful things to me. Again, it was like people not looking at me for who I was, but people looking at me for because of who my family was and no one could ever really see me. So it was just this very judgmental experience. So when People were now fast forward asking me to come to church. I was like, I don't want anything to do with church. Literally would pastors would come up and talk to me. I'll run the other way. I was like, I'd like, nope, you got the name pastor in your title. I'm out. Like, see you later. And so, yeah, from there, I just met some incredible people who really just like, it wasn't through them asking me to go to church. It was really through the way they loved me and their actions and who they were, their character, how they showed up in this world that made them stand out to me and saying, wow, they're so filled. There's this light in them. There's this energy in them and there's this love in them and whatever they have, I want that. And so I'd end up going to church with her and she invited me to her home to do a life group. And it was really then that I experienced the love of God and really where my faith journey had begun once again, because when I was young, I, I had experienced God. So I knew that he existed, but I'd been hurt by too many people in the church to understand that people are flawed. People are not God. People are not Jesus. And so it's like really having to seek after God and Jesus and what that looks like in my life rather than chase after what, you know, people who are flawed. And so, yeah, from there, it was just like this amazing journey of transformation of following faith, falling in love with Jesus, that love just like grew and just overflowed in me. And really just like he took me through such a journey of like discovering my gifts and my talents and my abilities. And I really found this gift of just bringing people to the table, really just creating communities, really bringing people in and just loving on them the way that I was shown love when I needed it most. So, and that's kind of how I started really with what I do now is because I got a job really creating singles events and creating these communities of people that were lonely, that were new to the city, that didn't know anyone, couldn't find community, 
you know, after high school, how do you meet friends? How do you meet people? And from there, I got to see and introduce people that went on to get engaged, went on to get married. And I started seeing the fruits of this and how beautiful it was. And so fast forward, God had called me to Toronto where I live now. And I had no idea why I was like, great. I don't know anyone there. I don't have a job there. I don't have a house there. I don't have nothing there. And I had everything in Vancouver where I was before. And I was like, I was so confused. I was like, why God are you bringing me there? But through it is he's really strengthened me. My relationship with him has grown so much because I haven't had to rely. I've had to really rely on him rather than my familiar places or my comfort zone or the people and community that I had that just flourished with me in Vancouver and coming to Toronto I really had to get in those moments with him rather than looking to other people to you know make me feel better or comfort me in that way that only he can and so moving to Toronto I went through so many ups and downs and all different things but through it I have seen nothing but an overflowing of God's goodness and his love and yeah, I got I got um, a job with another matchmaking agency. And I realized it's something I was really passionate about. And then, but my passion laid with working with Christian singles and dating in the church, because coming back to church at an older age, I didn't know what it meant to date as a Christian. I didn't know what godly relationship looked like. I, and, and thankfully, God really placed powerful couples around me that are so rooted in Christ that it's like the most beautiful thing that could have happened because I'd never seen healthy relationships before that. I never. And so my vision of relationships, there was no vision because all I'd ever seen is toxic relationships. And I was like, if that's what relationships look like, I, I, could, I would rather be single like to be honest. And then when God really placed these amazing relationships around me, I got to see this vision of what could be. And that's when he really started to like show me to work with Christians and Christian singles, because a lot of churches don't have room for Christian singles. They, it goes from youth group to like pre-marriage counseling. And you're like, well, I don't fit in either of those. So where do I go? And I remember even being back at my old church and you know, speaking on a panel for their youth conference. And I wasn't in the age of the youth conference. So when I went, I was the oldest person in the room and same with my friends and we would go, but it was like, okay, but how do we change it that there is a place for Christian singles? And in fact, I think your single season is so important. Um, I've grown so much in my single season. And if I didn't take the time in my single season to really become this full person that now knows what a healthy relationship was, if I would have just got married right, at, right away back then, I wouldn't have been a healthy person. And that relationship never would have been able to last. And so, yeah, my goal is to really just like, fill that void of, of spaces for Christian singles to really be able to bring them to the table, give them the resources that they need to really like thrive in healthy relationships. And I believe that I'm not here just for this, this thing that I'm creating isn't just a business, but it's a legacy vision that it's not just going to be for this generation. It's going to be for generations to come. And it's really going to be bringing people to the table to meet other great Christian singles. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about not, not just matchmaking, not just having clients, but also building community and also building a Christian singles community that people feel like they're not so alone in their single season. So that is, so, you know, it's kind of a short summary of uh, my story, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. I mean, thank you for unpacking your journey and how you're becoming the Michelle that God uniquely made you to be. I love how each like chapter of your journey really weaves together and it shows why you're so passionate about what you do now, because it's an outpouring of literally who you are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a beautiful gift. Um, you know, are you a coffee drinker? I'm not. No, tea? Tea sometimes. Okay. So if you were like, or what's your favorite drink? Like Coke or water? Soda? Water. Water. Okay. I, so we're I love water. hydration. So we're water. We're having water. I have yeah. water with me. You're having water with somebody. You're hanging out. And whether it's um, probably via Zoom, since you guys are still in lockdown. So you're yeah. sitting with some water with a, a new friend. 
and they're just saying, Michelle, like, I need some help. How would you encourage me to become who God made me to be? You took such bold, brave steps in designing your identity, discovering who he made you to be. How would you encourage someone on their own journey? Yeah, I think first and foremost, um, and something I've been learning on my own journey is like to be really rooted in in the word, be really rooted in prayer, get in those intimate moments with with God, because I feel like, and, and even at the beginning, if I look at like, you know, really when I came to know my faith, I tried to do all the things. I tried to, you know, serve every day in church and go on mission trips and host all the groups and do all the things. But like, I didn't know God. I didn't know, like, I didn't have that intimate personal relationship with him. And like, don't get me wrong, serving is great and hosting groups is great. And I've been blessed and filled so much by doing those things. But I think like you need to be rooted in your own relationship with God. And I think that's when you discover the gifts that he has given you. You discover your own identity. You start to see yourself through the eyes of him. And it's just like this beautiful thing. Like I've had literally over the last year, I've had more profound moments with God than I've ever had in my life. And I think it's because literally he's taken away all the distractions over the last year. Like I'm an extroverted extrovert. I'd be with people every single day if I could be, but I really, I haven't been able to. So what have I been able to do? I've been able to have those still quiet moments of just sitting in his presence and really getting to know not only myself better, but also growing in relationship with him. And as I draw near to him, he draws near to me. And it's honestly been such a beautiful experience that has taught me so much. And, and it's really allowed me to not allow the fear that comes with like living in this busy world where it's comparison and seeing other people like I held myself back for so long because I was so afraid of what other people would think of me and when I really just rooted myself in him I stopped being afraid and I just started chasing after what he has for me and knowing that it's so bigger than what I have for myself and that I can rely on his strength and I don't only have to rely on my own strength because I am like here and he is here. So if I'm only relying on myself, I'm always going to fall short. And I think that's been so beautiful just to see that like, you know, if I don't have words, he gives me words. If I don't have ideas, he gives me ideas. If I don't know what, like what to say to people, he brings me those words out of my mouth. And it's so amazing how he, whenever I feel like I, I can't quite make it, he always shows up and gives me that bit that I need to just like keep going. And so I would say just like get in personal relationship with God, first and foremost, get rooted in him, know his word and, and pray like prayer is so powerful. I've seen the power of pray, prayer and what it can do. And I think you really start becoming who you're supposed to become when you get to know him on just another deeper level. I couldn't agree more. So wise. You know, if somebody was watching right now and they were really interested in learning more about your matchmaking company or how they can get connected or they want to follow your journey even more, like where can people connect with you online? Yeah, absolutely. Most um, of my personal accounts are Michelle Apples, anywhere you look on all of the social platforms. Um, so Facebook, Instagram, Clubhouse, um, or any new ones that might pop up sooner than later. Michelle Apples. Um, my company is Miss Apples Matchmaking. So that's really easy too. It's just missapples.ca. Um, yeah, and that's how you can find me. And tell me a little bit about Miss Apples, Apples Matchmaking because I have also signed up. There's free community too, which is really cool. And I love your website and just the system and process. So tell everybody a little bit about what you do there. Yeah, so I um, host online speed dating events. So uh, those are always updated. You can join my free singles database. And that just really is a resource I use when uh, I get new clients on to be able to scout someone for them. Um, if you're on that database, then you also get an e-newsletter that tells you all about the events, tells you about our clubhouse community. We also have a Facebook group that you can join. Um, and yeah, I'm just really passionate about bringing people together, connecting people and creating that community. So so that's how you can kind of get a hold of me. You are rocking it. I absolutely love it. I just read like my first newsletter, I think last week or the week before. And I was like, oh, I got an email from Miss Apples. Like how cool. And so I loved it. So amazing. I, I had so many people email me about the featured bachelors and bachelorettes. And I was like, this is great. 
it like makes it so much easier to do my job because all the people just come to me and be like, Hey, I think it'd be a match. I'm like, great. Go for it. I love it. I love what you're doing. I think it's so encouraging and what a fabulous resource um, on all of our becoming journeys. So thank you, Michelle, for unpacking your journey, who you are, and y'all make sure you go follow Michelle and check out everything that she d- she's doing. And just girl, I'm cheering you on big time. I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so blessed to be here.